How's everybody doing? Happy Wednesday. Hi. Um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, yeah, Mr. Don Hall. Married to this guy. Such a gem. So he's gonna accompany me uh, for a few things. We're, we're gonna get it started with a little bit of heart crane. Yeah. And this goes out to everyone in the room. Thou canst read nothing. Thou canst read nothing except through appetite. And here we join eyes that in sanctity where brother passes brother without sight, but finally knows conviviality. Go then unto thy turning and thy blame. Seek bliss then, brother, in my moment's shame. All this that balks delivery through words shall come to you through wounds prescribed by swords. That hate is but the vengeance of a long caress, and fame is pivotal to shame with every sun that rises on eternity's long willingness. So sleep, dear brother, in my fame, my shame undone. Thank you. I was thinking about this a lot today and wanted to uh, kind of leave you with a note. I want to know from the smartest people left in this country who are in this room, are you planning, scheming, dreaming up how to be better? Will you ditch your cable? Will you buy less and work less? Will you drop out of the military? Will you befriend the underdogs? Make love, not war? Good. Oddly enough, we're all a bit smarter this time. This struggle stands to make us all a whole lot better. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Adopt a new issue. Take a fresh stand. Learn more about something I didn't know about before. Listen. Travel. Write my heart out. Keep saving so that I can give. Really give until it hurts. I'll be giving away a lot to people and organizations who will fight and make good on their promise to look out, especially for women's health, innovation within the scientific community, and to make it harder to acquire a gun. We will never be more prepared than right now, and I believe in you. I hope you gave yourself a chance to talk to yourself today and listen to about what you're going to do. It's not too late. Write something down. Make it physical. Remind yourself and remind others. Stay posy, stay punk, and stay tuned. And start tonight with this open mic, respected by not berating the audience. Behind this mic, everyone can hear you even if they're talking. Do not get up here if you are drunk. Open mic participants, keep it to about five minutes, please. Also remember too, as Elizabeth has said before, this is a space for radical free speech. Radical is in awesome in scope and power, not an extremism and divisiveness of viewpoint. And I love you, thank you. <laughs> I've left some literature up here on the table. Elizabeth makes CDs for this, and um, that stuff. Donate if you can, and help her to keep making this happen. And now, without further ado, I'm going to ask Mr. Don to join me for the rest of these poems. Untitled. Have I considered in the slum of my language what precisely this poetry should adore? while I prey on the triumphant vomit of one alphabet for focus, the true measure slips. Memory rudely cradles recent lusts, his rapid breaths press to mine, warmth attacks of the passionate body. Expert to that condition, all inflated romantic acclaim, lead me dangerous to the stars, and away from my paper academy. I consider these adorations then to be my skillful brothel and wax profane and eager in provoking more luscious alliance.
Illinois Drunk Tomb. Thanks. You guys can to me. Thank you, I appreciate it. I have seen this judgment list like a penis in an ice cream press, loamed in the soft scorch summer, interested in only one cool arena of love, notched on pedestals, dismissed of suspicion, onward of increase in the simple vessel. It wields its chapters to parts unknown, scattering the fire's reverse to the lovemaking. Drawn westerly as an uncaged wind, rearing up refulgent and combustible under nomadic composites of antique feelings. Numinous boyfriends give up the weed, kicking aside clandestine habitual usages. Total the index of instant corrections. Overused blues and you might get the message behind self-absorption diaries all blown over. Lovesickness in the drunk tomb of an Illinois poem. Poem for optic nerve. It could have been somebody else's good life, but the kiss smeared into my portrait goes uncleaned. Hanging in a diner on a wall, not unlike the kind in a museum. Maybe not so white. It bears it witness to average problems and the rays of sun that almost reach the frame to cast their midday heat against it. It's a patient listener to all the jukebox's wishes. Mid-muted laughter and mostly gentle conversation. The patrons go then, again, out into the wide blue world, the sound of a bell. A portal opens, and their movements track that path where I cannot follow. The gas up, the coffee to go, the idle togetherness turned to expression, and maybe to how your clothes are fitting you and catching the light and the air. What's left to share after all that? Time puts hotel walls around your imagination, lavish all the same. The seasons are a lead-up to the next series of minor catastrophes, also encased in lipstick. Some are safe for work. Try to keep up for art's sake. Prove that grimace has a place in the cuts of perfection. Another layer added, another revealed. Ink, pencil, color. This progress has numbers to describe an age we ache to assign. The night makes as much sense as the ground, landscape hurtling toward skyscape, in motion and always connected. How broad is the day, with its hooks for any feeling, its rooms and its flaws, and charged desires seeking purchase? Winter dried up amongst this library, and it caused me no grief. A library of sighs and sips, and broken dishes to infect my gesture. You're gone, and out I go with you. Remember me. You can take me along every time with your bright eye. For you. The kinkatologist's last eight bucks. Look there, deep into the idiot empire, where a single savant goes unfed by choice. Skip jokes that are not gotten or were never funny. Gloss small talk not heard and not repeated. Moreover, the opposing extreme of any ivory tower artifacts of sin. 
Here he is, found out by uselessness in pockets of plastic crap toy shaped mischiefs. Stupidity smiles up the corner and howls out its ungreeting. Sky is falling salutations, aristic as feathers left unpreened for fashion. No ladies' man clouds his own judgment with found cigarettes and deliberate poverty like the kinkatologist, who arm wrestles with the hours only to end up spraining his own ass. Everything he ever is or was can be found in a store fornicating with $1.99 satisfaction and laundromat arcade blindness, never thinking of his weight in Queen Bee's. Two lovebirds on a fence singing happily. Mouths are instruments to speak, to call, to kiss. Along the high wall of the crowded marketplace, these birds preen and verge. Lovers who don't go back who can go home, who will not stay to explain away the magnet of what has been witnessed or what has been made. Ears are instruments to tune, to hear, to interpret. Could we dare in a letter, art? Oh, how our fire peaks when air rubs blood together under these living feathers. Taste is still with us. Music makes us forget what we had to say. All these doused magics play a packed up call into adjacent backyards. Hearts wailing to attention while tongues paint each other red. And the song catches on to neighborhoods nearby. gonna send this one out to Mr. Jason Miller. He's not here this evening. Oh yeah? Hey! There's a regular. Hey dude, didn't see you there. This one goes out to you. The girl takes the test. The trial is familiar and full of detestable averages, but the book must be steered before it is to be found, no? Now is never a bad time for admitting, for knowing. Even appearances of seamlessness do carry their seams. A pedestrian glimmer reducing to seek the pronunciation of a greater spur. What seems to be so sorry and soft and sad is that coming true understanding in a place where she comprehends how insecure most people are. Did she believe something about herself she wasn't supposed to, to arrive at this island of asserted clarity of the self? Or was it all good work and golden sacrifice of time and words she hoped that fullness of expression might rise from and then truly be. The pearls buried in the filth. What is so frustrating is that there seems to be no more clean space for mess in this house. But she can't go back to bed now. Some other manifestation has to be sought out to help. Something old has to grow visible again. The symbols stand while other structures fade. She wears an unk. She carries amethyst. She drips silk steps only mixed with clay. Runes begged her bend and she played along in the form of collage, clogged full to beauty. Like jagged spring with newly invented powers, like heat from wood and pewter, crimson reflections, metal and purpose. The music stops if you're not paying attention. And a stick end is not pure until it goes deep for a moment into the fire. Then you feel yourself exhale. You know, even if you get burned, you can do something a bit more than just average. And that counts as a kind of music. 
a rescuer. Like glossy black or a happiness you recognize as happiness and wade for a moment into the refreshing pool of it, the pool to become the book. The sweet truth and the lie resurrected, secrets in a trapdoor tooth, manuscript weeping like lace from a slit to the wrist, kisses at ankle and top of foot to solicit seashell whispers, a house for the cure crouched gently at the base of the skull. Thank you. Come on. diver and a dancer, but the dancer is wearing off. There's a cut where my lips should be and I pour alcohol into it. Laughter seems so foreign. Half smiles are a shielded bite. Sure, this heat is a prison, but no one seems to be able to remark creatively about the quality and quantity of its bars. They turn on me too, those hopeless yesterdays becoming tombs of time's treasure. A measure of wet that sits flat before flooding. Yes, but I'm never so depressed I stop making the bed. Yes, as long as there is a bed to make. The fall from grace is perpetual. The mating within oneself of innocence to experience causes both grief and beauty. The great betrayal happened very young. Somewhere between the ages of 14 and 16, prob probably. A lot of key personality building happened within that time. It was nice to go to school and be numb some days. Boys stage proofs for me of how weak and thinly motivated they could be. Talkers of the wrong kind of talk, but I'd like to think I reclaimed myself in them too. The best parts. Got married years later in a black dress. My nails went unpainted. My eyes milky blue as a calm sea. Pearls in my ears. Real treasure from the deep. Maintenance betrothed to that time when magic truly arrives and the earth uses it to right itself. But time, isn't it just like time all over again? Come on, when I go and keep my window open, I must expect all that city dust to blow in and coat my desktop. Light in abundance to see the dirt. While sore in its soak of sleep, my heart speaks sludgy and binary. Deep beats cast find no relief. They crave an orbit. They know no other device. But let's change all that because see, I'm quite young, and for everything I do, I can be naked. I can walk around wishing on my shape and hearing it gurgle. Somebody has to deeply inhale, exhale, and play out all the magic for this family. Someone has to swim until they hit the diamond of air far below. I told you I was a diver. I can show you the cavern where I sang my first song after being born, and it still rings there, trapped and eerie for all years. It does not fade or evolve. It is just an essence. When I go there, I know that for a moment I am as close as before to something great. What had been good and pure was a glory again coming into view. All the heaviness and impurities clouding my innocence bleed out of my eyes like filthy lace while I climb out of the sidewalk and up into the shining lake with its waters that take every stain. I swim and bleed until I am without cracks. Then it's back to the window. One last thing and then this part is over. Very early one morning before all this and long after in the aching, cramping blue of summer's last dawn, I heard a very queer bird song, high and squealing, trumpeting and trilling, clipped and ululative, as language between animals often is. It came closer, and I moved from my rumpled bed to see. Quetzalcoatl swooped down through the buildings on my street and called again from its righteous beak. The electric and magnificent serpentine tail leapt wildly behind as a whip or a cake might. The phoenix-like feathers took on new colors in their own fire. Wingtips fanned and brushed the lamp poles on either side. When I ran out of my house with nothing, it was in hopes that it would choose me. For what I didn't know or care, I grew as I ran. Some buildings lurched and leveled under my feet as I passed into shortcuts. They weeped out all the water within them and became silky sand dunes again. A desert for climbing back, back, back into prehistory. The bird was my cup running over, and its obsidian heart was a secret destruction that could not be known. No wonder I followed. 
I didn't want to be average in my thinking anymore with this dark beauty everywhere. Anyway, when I look back, there is damage and smoke and people screeching inside their own mental digitless loops. The bond with the inevitable has taken over, and if they could just hear some good music again, they might be saved for a while. Oh, damn, I almost forgot. I made a playlist of your favorites. Listen to it with good speakers or some headphones that can put you back together when the moon changes your shirt into sparks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donna.